welcome, welcome. So, you'll see. Today, we're going to be talking about rotational motion. All right. So, let's start by defining the basics that we started off with. So, we talked about your displacement, which we defined it in previous videos, as your change of x, which is going to be your x final minus your x initial. So, x, that's what's your final precision. And this is going to be your initial precision. And that little fella, your delta, that's your change in your precision, right? So your displacement is defined, we define as delta x, which is x final minus x initial, and we gave it the letter B for the, you know, displacement. So we divide this by your time, and what are we gonna get? Your velocity, which if we looked at units, we get a blue over here, for unit, this is going to be in meters. This is going to be meters per second. You take this velocity and I'm going to say this is your velocity V. Take this velocity and divide it by your time again. And what you're going to get, you're going to get your acceleration, which we gave it letter A which we said that's going to be in meters per second squared. We took this velocity. And we multiplied it by the mass. And that's what we talk about. your momentum. We take this mass also, we multiply it by the acceleration, and what are we gonna get? The force, we give it a big letter F, which is gonna be your kilogram meters per second square. And we call that the new 10, which is, you give it a big letter M. We take this force and we multiply it by our displacement D. So here's our force. And this is our displacement that we start off with. And what do you get? That's where we talk about the work. We give it a big W and it's gonna be basically your mass times the acceleration for your force. Go ahead, so your force is mass times acceleration like we mentioned. Times your distance. Work makes you mad. That's why it's important to get the identification because too much work makes you mad. Your mass times acceleration times your distance. And this is going to be your Newton meters, which we defined it as your joules, which is your unit for your work. Now, that's for a linear. Now, suppose that we have an object. Go ahead and draw my little circle over here. And so let's say we got an object. Let's say we got a ball on a string. So here's your ball. And it's right over here and it's going through our that circle of paths. It was started over here and let's say end up right over here. 
Well, first of all, we need to define something called a revolution. So one revolution is going to equal to one full turn. So we're talking about this whole circle. Every one full turn is one revolution. Now, let's say you get this ball that's going on, on this circle path, on this circular path. You start off with decision A, you go out to decision B. So, let me get a different color over here. So, in the first path, it goes over here. So, we can define that as theta i. The second path is gone. Uh, let me just get a different color. I would say I will get yellow. It's right over here. That's your second path. That's going to be your theta final. This is your starting off theta. This is your final sign. That means this little fellow over here, that's going to be your delta theta. And that's where we're going to actually define something called your angular displacement. Which is going to be the distance traveled on that circular path. In this case, it's your theta. So your delta theta is going to be equal to theta f minus your theta i. Now, let's take a look at that circle again. So you're going in a circular path. Now, what is theta? Well, if you actually deal with uh, degrees, let me get a different color. You start off what? At zero, you go up to 90 degrees, 360, uh, sorry, 180, 270, and 360. Now, having to deal with degrees, is going to be messy mathematically. So that's where we do something called the radian. Now, the radian, you're talking about a full revolution. So that's where we do the pi. Let me get a different color. Actually, let me get a blue. You start off at zero. You got your pi over two. Your pi is your 180. This is 3 pi over 2. You come back to 2 pi. So a full revolution on this is 2 pi's. So your 2 pi radian is going to equal to 360 degrees. So the path that's going on for the displacement theta is going to be in radians. So your delta theta, or let me actually go ahead, your theta tau, that's going to be in radians. It's going to be in radians. It's going to be in radians. So for a full revolution, Your theta is going to equal to 2 pi radians, which is 360 degrees. So your 2 pi radians is going to equal to 360 degrees. And we define again your change in theta is going to equal to theta final minus your theta initial. So again, this is your change and your displacement, where this is going to be your angular. Final, angular displacement final. This is going to be your angular, I'm going to write down displacement. Let me actually go ahead and write this down. So this is your change in displacement for both of them. Your change in displacement is the angle displacement final, but your angle, angle displacement initial. And again, your unit for this one will be radians. Now, let's take a look at that little fellow that we drew again. So let me just take a little part of that. 
So let's say this part that we drew right now over here. And go ahead. All right. If you take that part, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like more like an ice cream cone. Now, this little fellow over here on the top, let me get the color green. This is called your arc length. And we're going to give it a letter S. Now, your theta is going to, let me get a different color. So your theta is going to equal to your arc length divided by R. R, that's your radius right now, right over here. Here's your R. Here's your R, and this is the arc length over here. This is your arc length which we call S, according to your book. So, so it'll be S over R. Now, so you get a ball that's going in a circle path. The circle path, we define it in radians, which is basically the distance that's going in there, which is your theta. Now, because it's changing on distance over a certain period of time, that means it has to have a velocity. That's when we talk about omega. So your omega, that's going to be your angular velocity. Which is going to equal the same as the velocity. Your change in, di your change in distance over your top. This is your change in uh, your angular displacement over your top. Working out your units. Your velocity is meters per second, but for this one, for this one, we have it set at radians, so it'd be your radians per second. Now, because something has a velocity, it has to have an acceleration to achieve that velocity. That's what we talked about in the beginning of the lecture. That's what we talk about alpha. So you talk about your alpha. This is going to be called your angular acceleration. And it's going to equal to your change. Same thing as the acceleration. Your change in velocity over your top. This is going to be your change in omega over your change in top, which is your omega final minus your omega initial over your time final minus your time initial. Now, you got this ball that's going on a circular path. It's going from one point to another that it has to go in an angular motion that has a theta with an angular velocity and angular acceleration. Now, the speed that goes on the path itself, that's called your tangential velocity. That goes on the tangential line. So and that's where we go with dt, your tangent velocity. And the same thing is distance over time. This distance that we are going is your arc length. That's the distance that we are traveling on there, right over here. So this is going to be your S, the distance that you are going over your top, which we defined S as theta equals S over R. That means S is going to equal to R theta, which R being the radius. So in this case, this is going to equal to r theta over t. But we defined 
and then we get a different color. We defined theta over T as omega, as seen over here before. Which means that your tangential velocity is going to equal to R omega, which is still is going to be how many radians per second are you going? Now, because you have a tangential velocity, that means we have a tangential acceleration. We give it the AT, so tangent acceleration, which is going to equal to, again, your change in velocity over your change of time. But which velocity is your tangential velocity, which is going to be your tangential velocity in the uh, final, minus your tangential velocity initial, divided by T, which is going to be R omega final minus R omega initial divided by your time, which, I can go ahead, which we defined, I don't really get a different color, we def well, let me actually go ahead and break this down, which is going to equal to R omega final minus omega initial divided by T which is R delta omega over T, which we define this, your angular velocity over your angular acceleration as, I don't know why I didn't change to red, alpha. So your tangential acceleration is going to equal to R alpha. All right, now let's go back to our diagram. Let me just draw a new diagram over here. Over here, we're going to get one over there. A little circle. Now, so let's say if you have an object over here, this object is going on a velocity perpendicular. I'm going to try to get this perpendicular. Which is going to, that's going to be your V. And this is going to be with a 90 degrees angle on R. When the object is right over here, it's going to have a velocity, V, and going in toward the center, it'd be your centripetal acceleration. So, and we defined the centripetal acceleration in a previous video, so it's going to equal to your velocity square over R. Which velocity? That's going to be your tangential velocity, which is R omega. Let me go ahead, AC, put centripetal acceleration. All right. So, which means that your centripetal acceleration is going to equal, which is V squared over R. It'd be R squared, omega squared, over R. Both of them cancel out. And what you're going to have is going to be R omega squared. Where again, and let me go ahead and write this down, where omega, the angular velocity, is your change in distance, which is in this case, your angular displacement divided by your time. All right, now let's take a look at an example, shall we? So, with rotation, in the simplest kind of rotation, points on a rigid point, uh, rigid object move on circle path around F axis of rotation. The angle which the object rotates is called the angular displacement, which we just defined as your final minus your initial displacement, your angular displacement. Theta, and there's going to be in radians. So your angular displacement unit is going to be in radians. Uh, we define the full revolution, which is a one full circle, which is going to be 360 degrees, which is going to be two pi radians. Uh, the distance traveled, that's going to be your arc length. 
So your arc length is going to equal your well your uh display angle displacement is going to equal your arc length, the distance travel divided by the radius of that circular path. So let's say we have this little example. Satellite put in orbit whose radius is four point two three times ten to the seventh. Uh, and it does that in two degrees. Find the arc lengths that separate them. So that's our first example, example number one. Yep, example number one. All right. So your radius says 4.23 times 10 to the 7 meters. Now, how many degrees we have is going to be two degrees. You're going to multiply that by two pi for each 360 degrees. Your degrees cancel out. And what you're gonna have, you're gonna have four pi over 360, which is gonna equal 2.0349 radians. And we are looking for our arc length. And you know the arc length equals r theta. And in this case, it's going to equal to your 4.23 times 10 to the 7. Multiply that by 0 0.0349. And you get 1.48 times 10 to the 6 meters. Let's go ahead and check our work. Perfect. Now, uh, so we already talked about the angular. Now, the angular velocity, the average angular velocity is how much angular displacement you go per time, and we, it is radius per second. We just talked about that. And then you talked about the angular acceleration, which is your angular, which is your velocity divided by your time which is going to be your angular velocity divided by your time, which is going to be how much radians per second squared. So let's do another example. As seen in the front of the engine, the fan blade is rotating at an angular speed of minus 110 radians per second. As the plane takes off, the angular velocity of the blade reaches three, minus 330 radians per second in a time of 14 seconds. Find the angular acceleration, assuming it will be constant. So this is called example four for some reason. All right. So your omega... Initial was minus 110 radians per second. Your omega final is going to equal to minus 330 radians per second. And your time is 14 seconds. I like writing seconds to SEC because mine looks like a five. And we are looking for your angular acceleration. And you know your angular acceleration is going to equal to change in angular uh, velocity divided by your change in time, and in this case, will be minus 330 minus minus 110 divided by 14. 330 minus 110 is 220. You're on the negative side divided by 14. So we have minus 15.5 radians per second. Good. They actually rounded up. We are got we got the answer actually right. Fifteen point five radians per second. Now, taking a look back to our kinematics equation that's going in a linear motion. Your first one that we actually introduced was d f equals v i plus a f t. Your second one was d equals one half v i plus v f times t. The third one is VF squared is equals VI squared plus 2AD. And the last one, your D equals VIT plus AT squared over 2. Now, same concept, but in an angular rotation. Angular. So instead of your velocity, we have our angular velocity. So WF, your omega F equals omega I plus alpha T. Your theta is going to equal to one half omega I plus omega T, omega final times T. 
your omega final square is going to equal to omega initial square plus two alpha theta. And the last one theta is going to equal to omega i t plus alpha t squared over two. Now, we talked about the velocity having angular velocity, your angular displacement, your angular acceleration. Why are we not talking about angular time? That's because time is a scalar. It's not a vector. The direction does not matter. That means you are going in a linear path, or angular path, time is time. I just wanted to mention that. All right, so let's go ahead and do an example. So this is our five kinematic equation that we talked about, and this is in the angular momentum that we talked about. So uh, you get a blade that are in a blender that's going at a velocity of 375 radius per second when the uh, some kind of button is pushed on. When the blend button is pushed, the blades accelerate to reach a greater angular velocity. Uh, after the blades have rotated through an angular displacement of 44 radians. The angular acceleration was 1740 radians per second squared. Find the angular velocity of the blade. So here's another example. So your omega initial was 375 radians per second. Your theta was 44 radians. And your angular acceleration was 1740 radians per second squared. And we're trying to find the final angular velocity. And using one of the commandments equation, we are missing the time. So we use the one that we don't have the time for, which is going to be right this one. So your omega final square is going to equal your omega initial square plus two alpha theta, which if you solve it, your omega final is going to equal to 375 squared plus two times 1740 times 44. Plug that in. I got 541 radians per second. Let me go ahead and check. Oh, 542 radians per second. So very good. Now, we talked about acceleration, engineering acceleration. We talked about mass. We talked about velocity. So we, if we take this mass that we talked about of an object, and we multiply it by the tangential acceleration, tangent acceleration. That's where we get your tangent force. And let me just go ahead and write down what AT was, was R alpha. All right. And so your tangential force is your mass times acceleration, which if we have the tangential force, we multiply it by the radius. That's when we talk about our torque. So basically your tangential velocity is going to be the torque over your radius. So what is torque? Let me go ahead and talk about torque for a little bit. Torque. Torque is what causes an object to have 
angular acceleration. So let's say we have this ruler over here. So we put a nail over here. If you put a force on here, this will rotate this way. If you put a force on here, and this will rotate that way. And we already defined the torque before as your force times your distance or displacement. Which is your delta x. Which is going to be and let me get a different color in newton meters. Now, and we talked about in order for a body to be in equilibrium. All your acceleration in the x-axis has to equal to all the acceleration in the y-axis, which is going to equal to zero. Which basically, all your summation of the force in the x-axis is equal to zero, which means all your summation of the, for uh, the force in the y-direction is going to equal to zero. Also, it means that your angular acceleration is going to equal to zero, which means that all your torques is going to equal to zero. So... Your tangential force is going to equal to your mass times tangential acceleration. And again, let me just write this down. Is going to equal to R alpha. And we said that the torque was the tangential force times your radius, which means that the tangential force is going to equal to your torque divided by your radius. Now let's go ahead and substitute our little fella in, which means that that torque is going to equal to your mass times the tangential acceleration times your reverse. Although I actually messed up on that one, we get a different color. I mean, this one, go ahead and put it in here. So basically, this is going to equal to M times, times R times alpha times this R over here, which is M R squared times alpha M R squared. We're going to call that I. And we're going to call that your moment of inertia. Actually, let me go ahead and get it like a little closer. <laughs> and I'm going to write it. It's mr squared. Your mass times your radius squared. Which means that your summation of your torques is going to equal your summation of your mr squared times alpha, which is going to be your I alpha. So let me use a, a little pulley example, for instance. So let's say you have a pulley. Let me, get, let me make it a little bit bigger. So let's say you got, that's better. And then this pulley, you got some rope. Let's say this is our rope. Right here. <laughs> okay. This rope is going to go from one side, let's say to this side, angle theta. 
and a distance of your arc length S, which is R theta. The work that's done, which is going to be FD, is going to equal to FS, which is going to equal to FR theta. FR, that's our torque. So this is going to equal to your torque times theta. And again, our theta that we're talking about must be in radians. And the unit for it, that's going to be your joule, the unit for your work. Now, because it's because you got an object that's moving in a circle path that has a velocity, that has an acceleration that's going from point A to point B, this means if it's moving, it has to have an energy. What kind of energy? Your kinetic energy. We define the kinetic energy as one half mv squared. And again, let me go ahead. M is your mass. And V. Which we were talking about, we're talking about the tangential velocity dt, which we defined as r omega. Which let me go ahead. R is going to be your radius, and we defined omega as your angular velocity. So basically, this means that the summation of your kinetic energy is going to equal your summation is one half m r square omega square, where m r is going to be your i. So this is going to equal to one half i omega square. So your kinetic energy associated with the angular is going to equal to one half. I omega square. And this is going to be your rotational kinetic energy of a rigid rotation object. Now, one thing, so let me go back over here. Color. And I'm just going to do it right over here. So, if we said this is for linear, and this is for angular, what are we going to have? Your displacement, delta theta, which is going to be theta f minus theta i. Your velocity, which is going to be your omega, which is going to be your delta theta over your delta t, which is going to be radians per second, and this is going to be in radians. And your alpha is going to equal to delta omega over your delta t, which is going to be your radians per second squared. Now, we talked about tangential force. We talked about, and let me go ahead and write this down over here. Your tangential force, we defined it as your mass times your AT. And it's still going to be in Newtons. Now, 
what if we do what if we do, we multiply the tangential velocity with the mass? Remember, we define momentum. Let me actually go ahead and define the momentum first. When we have an object, let's say object mass m going in in a velocity v, that's what we talk about momentum, which is going to be your mass times your velocity. Now, the question is, when you talk about momentum, how how much momentum something has? See, the more momentum, the harder for something to stop. That's why to change momentum, You have to apply a force for an amount of time. And we define the change in momentum as your force times your change in time. And we call your force times your change in time. We give it a letter J and we call that your M pulse. Now, and that's what we talk about your angular momentum. So let's say you have a string that's going in with mass M. This R, let's say a ball in a string, and it's going in a force. So you give it torque on that way. It's going to move in. It's going to have something called angular momentum. And we give that a letter L. So your L is your angular momentum, which is going to equal to L, which is going to equal to M dt times R. And again, your V of T is going in in a circular path, actually. Oh, and that's the middle, so it goes. So, and again, this is your tangent velocity, which is the velocity perpendicular to the radius. Which is going to equal to R omega, which means that your angular momentum, which is going to equal to m v t r, is going to equal to m r omega times this radius over here, and is going to equal to m omega r squared, which again we defined your r and your m as your i. So your angular Momentum is going to equal to I omega. Where I is going to equal the summation of M R's in mass times the radius. And that should conclude our chapter on rotational motion. If you have any questions, please email me, abunaemeh at gmail.com. Uh, thank you so much. Have a nice day.